Hello. Hi. Um, thank you for being here. We're just going to wait a few seconds just for the old stragglers to hurry along. Um, yeah, there's always Fucking some people. Late. Always late. <laughs> um, so a couple of things to start with. If you're not already following us on Instagram, come and follow us on Instagram. On Instagram, we share lots and lots of different things. We share lots about birth. We share lots of birth videos. There's loads of things that we do that is going to be really helpful to you. So come and follow us. We are at The Birth Uprising. Um, and yeah, it'll be a good place to be when you are pregnant. Um, so we are going to teach you about what hypnobirthing is today, give you a few sort of tips and tricks that you can use for your birth. And hopefully at the end of this session, you will be feeling kind of a bit more rearing to go and kind of positive about your ability to smash this shit. So we're going to start with talking about some science. We're going to then talk you through some breathing techniques. We are then going to give you a few more little bits, like Alex said, um, so that you are able to boss your birth and get started on that positive birth journey because that is why most people come to these because they're probably feeling a little bit shit yeah. at the moment and um, want to start feeling less shit about and birth. Maybe you've come here and you don't know what hypnobirthing is, so let's get started with that. To begin with so hypnobirthing is about finding out about how your body works to help you to understand that your body can do it and how you can help it to do that it's about positive practical information about birth what your options are and how to make decisions about it it's learning about your rights in birth and how you can assert them and most of all it's tools and techniques to help you keep calm and in control mm. through the process and science, we're big on science at TVU. Yeah, this helps us to put things in place to stack the odds in our favor of the birth that we want. Absolutely. Now, personally for me, hypnobirthing wasn't something that I that came into my life until my second birth. With my first, somebody had mentioned hypnobirthing to me and I did what I think most of you probably will have done and a lot of people do when they hear about hypnobirthing and go, sounds shit, doesn't it? Because you do, it does sound shit. Like we totally get that, that when you hear it, it makes you think airy-fairy. It makes you think somebody sat in there kind of whispering sweet nothings to your vagina and trying to hypnotise you into, you know, God knows what. We understand that that's what it sounds like, but it's totally not like that. But that is what I thought first time round. So I didn't even entertain hypnobirthing with my first. And I went on to have an okay labour. Did I enjoy it? No. Did I get through it? Somehow. Um, but I spent the entirety of that labour stiff and scared and kind of held on to anything like this and just tense and it wasn't comfortable because of that so when I got pregnant the second time round, I thought I will look into hip my birth because I've had a few people mention it to me now and fucking hell it was so different my second birth because of all the things that Alex mentioned like I knew my rights and I had these amazing tools that I had with me during labor that I, enabled me to be calm to have a really lovely experience and I came out of that labor like smash that Yes. I was a goddess as far as I was concerned. Genuinely, I was like, well, where's my statue? Who's, why has no one built a statue of me yet? Because I felt incredible. And I thought I was the only one to ever birth like that. Because ever heard about people birthing nicely? Not really, no. no. Still not, no. No, absolutely. <laughs> and so I was very much along the thoughts of that I must have been the only one to have ever done that. And obviously Alex and I, we've been friends for a very, very long time. Um, and we got together after our second were born and had a chat and that's when I realised I wasn't the only one. Now I've actually got three children so my third when he was born um, his birth was slightly more complicated but I still came out of it feeling amazing so I did not have a textbook birth with him but because of hypnobirthing it meant that when plans changed when things took a little bit of a different route I wasn't scared I wasn't fearful I wasn't as worried as I was on my first birth I still felt empowered I still felt amazing and I still feel like a badass now and for me that's what hypnobirthing does it gives you the ability to birth in whatever way happens but makes you feel just incredible about your decisions and everything you've done during that birth and that's what tbu is all about and that's totally what we're all about as yeah. well we're about all births all people and not a prescriptive way of birthing at all um so a bit about me i've also got three children very similar story to jade with the first one where i thought hypnobirthing sounded like something that wasn't for me i struggled to concentrate on things and i had that um 
misconception, I suppose, that hypnobirthing is something that you must concentrate mm. on, that it's something that you actually do during your birth. Now, actually, it's about those things that you put in place and the way that you change your view of birth uh, before you're actually in labour. So with my first, I had a induction at the hospital that I did not understand. I didn't know what the induction process was. I didn't know what my choices were. And I had no tools or tricks to make that feel better. I didn't have a single fucking breathing technique. <laughs> and what that meant was that I really panicked throughout. I felt really helpless. And now looking back, I can see a hundred different ways that that could have been changed by hypnobirthing just knowing what was going on, having that trust in my body and having those tools. And they would really have helped my birth partner as well. He would have felt like he had more things that he could help me with. Um, so I became really nerdy after having my first and I discovered all the different things that you can look into when it comes to having a baby, raising a child. And so when I got pregnant second time round, it just seemed like another thing to nerd out on. I got really nerdy about birth and what that meant was that I developed such a trust in the birth process by finding out how it actually works and all the different ways that I could um, change my environment and have my birth partner help me to help the birth process along. So that's what I did. I set up my environment and I made birth plans so that I actually had an idea of how I wanted to birth my baby and what my decisions could be no matter what went on. Um, and so second time round, my birth was entirely different. It was faster, it was more enjoyable, and I loved every minute of it. I felt really calm and in control throughout. Um, my birth was actually pretty much pain-free until his head started coming out, <laughs> uh, which I never would have thought was a possibility for me because Jade will tell you I'm a fucking Oh worse. my God, she's such a wimp. Absolutely. Such a wimp. <laughs> so... <laughs> You know, it just goes to show that your hormones and your environment have such a massive part of how it actually feels to birth your baby. Um, so I came out of that birth feeling on top of the fucking world. Third time round, I really took my birth into my own hands because our home birth service had been shut down and I knew that I wanted to birth at home because I felt safe there and safety is a massive element of kind of mm. how the birth process works. And we'll go into that a little bit in a little while. Um, so for me, I was birthing at home no matter what. So I opted to birth my baby at home with a doula by my side and no midwife because unfortunately there were not any available. Um, and I loved that birth. It felt different to my second birth and I wouldn't say that that one was pain free. Um, but I definitely had so many tools and tricks and things to alter my comfort levels that I felt like I it was absolutely doable and I came out of it like yes <laughs> it went exactly as I had hoped that it would so hypnobirthing strikes again as far as I'm concerned it can be used for any type of birth and it it's just life-altering isn't it? it you use it after birth as well in life yeah. and I think that's what kind of people forget when they're thinking about like investing in hypnobirthing is it is something that you will use Oh, on a daily basis forever absolutely and we have people time and time again come to us in our dms on instagram and tell us that was life-changing but not only that i've got toddlers that i am using those techniques alongside which you know and you fucking need them. you need them when you've got toddlers um and yeah it's just they are incredible and we do share lots about hypnobirthing and the way in which you can use it and how much you can do and the tools that you can use we share a lot of that on instagram so if you're not following us already like i've said do come and follow us on instagram at the birth uprising because it is a valuable place to be. We don't just share our stuff either. We share lots of our instructor stuff because we run an academy. So we teach other people to be hypnobirthing instructors. And so we've got an awful lot of wealth of knowledge to share, yeah. essentially. So come check us out on the gram. Now let's start with a bit of the science of mm. how hypnobirthing works and what it actually does with your body and with your mind. Best way to do that is by talking about nature. Let's talk about nature yeah. because I think we can all kind of relate to yeah. the animal kingdom a bit so let's start with warthogs and how they might feel going along in the <laughs> in the old wild now a warthog is not often wallowing in the sort of anxiety that we think of in an everyday sense so if you're a warthog pretty much what anxiety is about is seeing a lion at the end of the fields and you've got to be vigilant or you die yeah so the warthog's amygdala that's the emotional center of the brain 
identifies the lion as a threat and that triggers the release of adrenaline throughout the body. It prepares the body to face the threat, to fight or to flee, and the warthog's heart is racing and breathing speeds up, lung passages expand and certain blood vessels dilate, all to make sure plenty of oxygen gets to the muscles needed to flee from that bloody lion. Now those muscles tense ready for action. The warthog's pupils dilate so its eyes can take in more of that scene. Its peripheral vision shrinks to focus on the lion in front of it and other systems get shut down. You've got better things to do with your energy than digest breakfast or worry about reproduction or anything like that. You've got to save your fucking life at this point. <laughs> so the warthog stops, start, stops salivating and digesting. Blood flow is diverted away from the stomach, away from the skin and nerves involved in arousal get turned off. Everything that's going on in his body uh, all at the same time is wonderfully adaptive. Now, fear has evolved as a helpful emotion. It has prepared the warthog so that it can escape mm -hmm. with its life this time. <laughs> if you're a warthog, there's a pretty good chance that you're eventually going to be killed by a lion. I'm sorry, that's just how it is. But if you're human and pregnant, you're probably worried about other things other than lions. We're smart enough to mobilise the exact same physiology as that warthog seeing a lion at the other end of the field. And we do it worrying about birth, unfortunately. Yeah, we've pretty much done that all our lives, mm -hmm. haven't we? So we hear a traumatic story. Oh no, my friend was in labour for seven days and it ended in a caesarean. Or, oh no, I've heard it's really painful. <laughs> oh no, this traffic jam is horrible on the way to the hospital. And the key thing with all of these cases is we're filled with fear. We're filled with distress. We're filled with anxiety. And what your body is doing is every perfect adaptation to send energy to your thigh muscles to run for your life. Now you can't fight or flee birth or pregnancy, but our body wants to respond just like that warthog when it sees the lion. If you think of the symptoms of stress, heart racing, tense muscles, stomach ache, pins and needles, dry mouth, not wanting to or being able to have sex, it's all very familiar because it's something we've all been through. Now, the amygdalas of humans who are anxious and scared are overly sensitive. Mm. They identify threats in everyday situations and set off this adrenaline chain reaction. And this is where hypnobirthing comes in. What we are aiming to do is change that fear, change the way in which our brains think of birth so we don't set off fight or flight. That is what we're aiming, is to not have that. We want to set off our rest and digest response. And actually, when labour starts, we can welcome it. And one of the ways in which we can do this is positive input. And what I mean by positive input is by watching birth videos, essentially. We need to be hearing more about how birth is amazing because we've spent our whole lives, like Alex said, what have you ever heard about birth before you've had your baby, before you go into labour? Horrible things. Yeah. Oh, I ripped from front to back. You've seen Rachel from Friends, you know, on her back screaming. You've then seen it on another TV programme. You've then heard your friend tell you a horror story. Then Janet down the road told you about her horror story. And actually, all of the input that we've had in our brain is horror and scared. So no wonder for the majority of us that we get pregnant. We go, yes, we're pregnant. And that's brilliant. Oh, oh, I've got to get the baby out. Oh my God. It's like a watermelon out of a small hole. It's like coming out your nostril. You know, all of these things that we hear and we've all heard it. We've been there. It's a pain worse than childbirth is like the pointer, isn't it? The worst pain ever. So we want to start changing that. We need that narrative within our brains to change so that when we go into labour, we then welcome it like I said as opposed to being like ah oh, fuck 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 don't yeah. be me first time round it wasn't enjoyable we don't want our body to stop that birth no. process we want our body to feel safe to allow that process to unfold and unfortunately when we're going in filled with fear and anxiety our body is doing what it thinks it should be in stopping that birth process and we definitely don't want that no and one of the ways like I said is birth videos so what we'd like to do is after this session we are going to email you um, with the same email that you would have received the instruction of how to get onto this session. Um, we're going to send you a birth video that we would like you to watch. We would really like you to sit down and watch it because it will be so different from what you've been told and it will be that start of that journey for you for changing your brain so that we do not set off fight or flight. We need to be able to change the chemistry within our bodies so that the moment labour starts, we relax into it, we you know really start to enjoy it and we're excited about it. Another way in which we can do that, another way in which we can change the chemistry within our body, and one of the core hypnobirthing techniques is breathing. Yeah, and breathing techniques can be used in any circumstance. They can be used 
on the way to the hospital when you're in those mm -hmm. pesky traffic jams. They can be used during inductions. They can be used in between surges. They can be used whilst waiting for a cesarean. There are so many different ways that we can use them and they're totally free. And the key thing with breathing techniques is to practice them beforehand so that they become second nature. Now we're gonna help you with that right now. We'll start you off with our first breathing technique so that you can go away and practice that and feel like you've got that in your breathing toolkit. Absolutely. So you can pass me the trusty ball. So I'm going to show you a breathing technique. This is what we call calm breathing or chilled out breathing. Um, and this is a really simple one. It's in for four and out for seven or eight. We tend to say in for four, out for more, because essentially that out breath, we want it to be nice and long. Now to do these breathing exercises, we want you to be nice and upright. It gives your lungs the ability to stretch out as much as possible. Now you need to practice this. You can't do it once. It's not a one and done kind of thing. It's a practice. It needs to become muscle memory. Because unfortunately at the moment, the way that humans breathe, we don't breathe optimally. But actually when we start doing things like exercise, what you'll find is that you do breathe a lot like, you automatically know that you need bigger breaths because we need more oxygen to go into our lungs and then be sent around our bodies to provide our muscles with that oxygen they need to work, which is what breathing techniques are doing in labour. We are trying to provide your blood vessels, your blood with more oxygen so that your uterus, which is a muscle, has the ability to work to its best potential. Um, so it does that as well as changing the way we are feeling in our brains as well. Breathing deeply can literally bring you out of a fight or flight state. It's why sometimes when you're panicking, without even realising, whoever is closest to you, who is with you, will go, breathe, just breathe, calm down, breathe. And you don't know, why do we say that to people? Because deep breaths, they do change us and they do take us out of that scared state. So this is your first one. So we are going to do a little bit of a demo now for a bit. We'll do it for a couple of rounds. We're not going to sit here for a long time doing it because it's a waste of our time doing it right now for you when you could go away and practice. But it's really important that we learn it. So what we want to do is get ourselves nice and comfortable. Take a few just breaths in. Just so that we can release all the oxygen from our lungs. And then we are going to start. So we're going to go in for four. And then out for seven. And in for four. And out for seven. And then once more, in for four. And out for seven. It's so calming. So calming. Like, it instantly just gives you a wave of calm. And you might notice that when you get to the top of that in for four, that you take a uh, quick and you hold for a second and go out as well. That's fine. That's great. In fact, it's good to hold for that second. It gives your mind more focus. These techniques, these breathing techniques, we teach more than just one. We have a digital course in which we teach a couple more. But this is a really, really good one for when you are feeling that fight or flight, that thing that makes birth less likely to happen as it should, that it brings you out of it. It really can change mm -hmm. it. And like we said, breathing techniques are free. They can be used in any mm -hmm. situation. And people are always in our DMs on Instagram telling us how much the breathing techniques helped, how much they kind of helped maybe despite them not really thinking that they would help mm -hmm. that much. So really do trust in those breathing techniques and learn them for whatever kind of breath you're having because you will get an opportunity to practice them and they will make you feel good. You can practice them in pregnancy as well. If you are waiting for your appointment mm -hmm. and it's running late, and you're starting to get a bit or if you're in a traffic jam during pregnancy then please do try these breathing techniques so that you can see the effect that they have and they do help they do genuinely bring us out of that fight or flight um something else that is going to be ever so helpful for you when you are birthing is considering your position as well breathing along with positioning are two of the things i think can be most beneficial when you are birthing your baby so when you think of positions to birth your baby, what position are you immediately thinking of? I'll give you a second. I know what the answer is. Just have a think. If you're there with your partner, have a little discussion. 
Awesome. Laying on your back, right? Because that is what, again, we are taught to believe by what we've seen our entire lives. We're taught to believe that laying on your back for birth is the norm. Legs in stirrups? Yes, please. That's exactly what should be happening, Makes right? Makes perfect sense. Yeah, 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 of course. Um, imagine an elephant giving birth. They're mammals as well, because we're mammals. Imagine an elephant giving birth, laying on its back with its legs in stirrups. Ludicrous. Absolutely wild. No, 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 no. It, you think of that, it's the most bizarre imagery. But that is how humans have been birthing, unfortunately, for so, a bit of time now. Um, mm. And that's not because it is evidence-based. That's not because that's how it should be happening. It's not because it's helpful whatsoever. Mm. It is due to a lot of cultural things that have happened over the years. Um, but it's, it's not habit, helpful. Out of habit, essentially. Yeah. Out of habit for healthcare professionals being able to see the vagina, you know. Yeah. As if that's something that makes a baby come out. Mm -hmm. um, and it's what we see on the television. Obviously, we go into the birth room and often the focus is a bed. So we kind of feel like we go in and we lie down on it. But actually, it is impacting the ability for our baby to come out. So what we want is to remain upright as much as possible and to use movement to help that along. Mm -hmm. And we can give you a bit of a demo now so that you know what the fuck we're talking about mm -hmm. so this if i give you the baby you can demo the baby bit so this is our pelvis lovely one here it is actually very lifelike so this is a good way of showing it so if we are laying on our backs for birth this is how we are laying okay now baby is in there and baby will struggle to come down now there's a couple of reasons why baby will struggle to come down number one gravity when we work with gravity baby then is more likely to be able to flop down they're doing <laughs> They're doing less work um, because they aren't having to move across a surface. They can come down. Our muscles then are working with gravity. Everything works a lot easier when we are upright. A way I like to describe that is if you've got ketchup and you've only got a bit left in the bottle, how are you going to try and get that out? Are you going to lay it down and kind of move it that way? Or are you going to stand it upright and whack it and get it down? Obviously, whacking uh, the top of somebody's head while they're burping isn't going to do an awful lot. But it's a good analogy. So the second thing, the reason why this isn't helpful is that we have got this beautiful bone on our backs here that actually when we are birthing, it moves. And the reason it moves is to allow baby to descend easier. When we lay on our backs, we can lose up to 30% of the room in our birth canals because of the fact this bone can't move. So when we work with gravity and we stand up and we allow that bone to move and we've not got the bed holding it where it, sh where it shouldn't be, we then have so much more room in there and baby can then descend so much easier and can come round their bone isn't in the way and they can just fall straight on out um obviously they don't usually fall straight out but it's a, so much of a better way to birth is being upright now the way we describe it is ufo upright yeah. forward and open now we also kind of describe birth as a bit of a dance yes. you being upright and moving can help baby with any movements that they need to make now, you might hear that your baby is back to back or something like that before labour starts. And actually, it's very normal for babies to move position whilst in labour. So, yes, they might start off labour back to back. But if you are perhaps getting onto your front and things like that and moving swaying. around, swaying, doing a little jig, then you can actually help baby to make the movements that it needs to to get on out. So that's another vote for moving the fuck about whilst you're in labour. And you can practice this whilst you're pregnant. See what positions feel good to you that are not laying on your back. If you do find that you're in labour and you do want to lay on your back, go with it. This is essentially what we should be doing. We should be going with what our body is telling us to do. You might have an overriding urge to be up and swaying around and flicking your hips and moving. We should be following that because our bodies are very instinctual. We may not trust them that much. I don't think many of us in today's society trust our bodies, but actually when we are labouring, they really know what they are doing. We just have to kind of tune into it, but have a practice beforehand, like hands and knees, birth balls. Cannot recommend a birth ball enough. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you might be thinking, what if I have an epidural? Do I need to be on my back then? You absolutely don't. You can be laying on your side. You can be supported to get up onto like your hands and knees and lean over perhaps the back of the bed if you put the, the bed up. Um, your birth team are essential when it comes to having an epidural because they can assist you to move your body. The great thing about epidurals these days is that we can move and we can wait bear a little bit. It might just be that we need a bit of support to move into different positions and a bit of support for kind of taking on the most of our weight. But you can still move with an epidural. You can still kind of 
open up that pelvis and things and often that's something that people just don't know and if you don't know this stuff you can't use it and that's what we're all about is using information to be able to birth in a better way hypnobirthing helps to eliminate your fears yeah. with this information it helps you to put things in place with your birth that make you feel like a fucking badass going into your birth feeling like you can do it and it means you've got that toolkit there and it eliminates those fears that are really common things like tearing oh it's the one we hear time and time again isn't it people are terrified of tearing they really are um and you don't actually need to be tearing is something i think when we think of it we think of it happening right the second if alex and i would sit here and spontaneously just tear fuck oh my god that would be terrible however when we are birthing we have lots and lots of hormones going through our body there is lots of different sensations going on anyway there's lots of pressure in our vulvas that actually if we do end up tearing the majority of the time i say nine times out of ten people are like I tore, did I? And they don't know until the midwife have actually turned around and told them that they'd torn. That is ever so common. And actually, I've torn all three times I've birthed. Um, all three times I've... In fact, that's a lie. Two, the first two times I did perineal massage and still tore. Third time round, I didn't do it and, and still tore. Um, so perineal massage is another thing that I think people think they have to do so they don't tear. And it is not true whatsoever. The evidence is very much out on if perineal massage actually does anything our bodies are well adapted to if they do tear to just mend themselves really really well in the majority of cases and i think um it's worth thinking about that our bodies are set up for tearing to be a part of it mm -hmm. unfortunately there is nothing we can do to mean that we 100 percent won't tear but if we do our body heals so quickly mm -hmm. if you think about if you get a cut in your mouth and you're thinking, oh, I'm going out for that birthday meal tomorrow night and I was really looking forward to like a spicy thing and it's going to sting. Chances are your mouth will have almost healed itself by then. Yeah. And that is because the mouth is a mucous mem membrane and that feeling inside your mouth, you may recognise it as the same feeling <laughs> as the inside of the vagina. Don't lie. You know what it feels like. And so... Our vaginas and our vulvas are, they're filled with blood that can send everything that our skin and our tissues need to heal. And they are a mucous membrane, which means that they are set up to heal in that certain way. And they are often able to do that without stitching even. So the body just knows what to do. So it's really not worth having all this anxiety about what you can't control and what is really not going to be as bad as you think and we've got some tips that you can use afterwards for healing yes i am a expert at healing my vagina um really really simple stuff things like when you go for a piss have a little bottle that you pour uh, warm water on just so that you're not pissing into your stitches that's uncomfortable spritz for bits midwife stuff works beautifully really really enjoyed using that smells great my vag smelled wonderful while it was healing which who doesn't love that um and to be honest with you rest just need yes. to rest up and let your body do the work because it honestly does know what it's doing when it comes to sorting itself out afterwards that's something that i think we forget when we're looking after a baby we kind of put ourselves um like kind of on the back burner but mm -hmm. actually if you are getting as much rest as possible, if you're taking the time to just sit and do nothing and just rest with your baby, rather than feeling like you've got to be up and moving and doing things, if you're stretching yourself to your limit, then the chances are your body can't be healing optimally. Um, things like eating regularly, eating good nutritious food, sleeping wherever you can, letting other people take mm -hmm. over the housework, all of that is going to help you to heal any tears that you've got. So make sure you put things in place in pregnancy that mean that you're going to be able to rest as much as you can and everything that we've just told you everything about the science everything about the breathing techniques about the eliminating fear that's hypnobirthing so a lot of people will be thinking well you're just telling the stuff about birth hypnobirthing <laughs> hypnobirthing it is a full antenatal course and what we are trying to do is the just the top tier of it is getting rid of that fear that is what we're aiming at we need to help you to get rid of your fear that fear because when we spoke about the things about the warthog and how that affects the warthog all that will affect your birthing body as well and that does have detrimental effects to how your birthing body works when we are tense when we are scared our uterus it just will not work in the same sort of way we have so many things that that will mean that your uterus is so tense 
sense that it's more painful for you and then that pain then la- leads to you okay. feeling more scared and it's just a never-ending cycle and this is what we are helping you to do with hypnobirthing we do that then the techniques come then all the education comes and then you have got this toolkit that is just everyone deserves to go into labor feeling like they are ready to smash whatever is about to come at them hypnobirthing is associated with shorter labors a a more positive experience no matter how someone's birthed and i think that's key people are in our dms on instagram all the time telling us how maybe birth didn't go to plan but they had already planned and prepared for the what ifs the what would happen if their home birth didn't take place what would happen if they opted for an induction what would happen if they opted for a cesarean and it's really important that you have these things in place so we would 100% recommend doing a hypnobirthing course and getting that wealth of knowledge behind you so that you know the score you know what your rights are you know what your options are in different scenarios and you've thought about what you would want to have and it's important that you get your birth partner up to speed on that as well um, so you'll be able to watch this session back afterwards. Get your birth partner to watch it as well. Get them to watch a hypnobirthing course with you. Obviously, we do our hypnobirthing course, which is the best. It is generally. absolutely <laughs> the best, um, which is like twelve hours of birthy information, taking you through the hypnobirthing tools that can keep you nice and calm, as well as all that birthing information, so that you understand exactly how a baby gets out of your body and you feel like you're rearing and ready to do that um, watch that with your birth partner mm. make sure that your birth partner is on your side and that they're feeling good about birth because mm-hmm. the way they feel about birth will impact the way that you are feeling and that in turn will impact the way that your body is able to work 100%. so you've I got mean, to make that team haven't you you have and birth partners are often left to the side i think if there's any birth partners watching this now I think you are really, really important. And actually, the way you feel, like Alex said, it really does actually matter. You can really help a birth along by just being on the same page as that person that is giving birth. And not only that, I hear from people that don't do any kind of antenatal prep that the birth partners can often come out feeling quite traumatised because they've watched somebody they love goes through something they don't understand they don't know how to help they maybe felt like they were getting in the way they felt like they weren't any use and that's a really crappy way to feel at the birth of a baby that you most likely really fucking care about um so doing antenatal education with your birth partner is so so important hypnobirthing is honestly the best thing that you could possibly do for you for your birth partner for your baby it does mean that you set yourself up for such a good start into parenthood because you've started those decision making decision making skills and actually you're going to need them as a parent going forward there's so many decisions to be made when you have a baby you know what nursery are they going to go to what car seat are you buying all (laughs) of these things and it's important that you feel confident in your ability to make the decisions that need to be made Um, obviously the people close to us in our lives who have babies are in on hypnobirthing we make sure that they know all of this stuff and the birth partners in our lives fucking will not stop going on about no, it. My husband is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, my husband, my brother-in-law, like first thing that happens when anyone's pregnant is do a hypnobirthing course. Mm-hmm. So we urge you to do a hypnobirthing course. Do our hypnobirthing course. Yes. It's 45 quid and you will get a discount at the end of this. Yes. So, you know. Big discount as well. Um, so, yeah, birth partners, you're really, really important. And in fact, on Instagram, we've got a little birth partner guide as well one of our um, grid posts so come along and have a look at that and take a few tips from there um, and then come and do the full hypnobirthing course because honestly it will be the best money that you spend for your pregnancy Uh, get birth partners to come and follow us on the gram Um, it's important that they see birth and that they feel useful in this situation Um, we also do regular q a's on instagram we will often put a question box up and allow people to ask whatever the hell they want Mm -hmm. and we'll sometimes do them live we'll sometimes answer them in stories and we always save them in our highlights so go and follow us on the gram and check out our highlights for any kind of faqs and we are going to answer some faqs on hypnobirth in our course now Mm -hmm. Um, it's at the birth uprising by the way to follow us on instagram so make sure that you do it um so one of the biggest faqs really is about whether our course and hypnobirthing is useful if you're if you already know you're having an induction or a cesarean firstly yes yes, 100 it is almost more important if you have 
factors to consider that are complicated. So in our course, we have got a section on induction that talks you through the induction process from start to finish, the different methods that are used for induction. It talks you through how an induction differs from spontaneous labor so that you can put things into place mm -hmm. to kind of counteract that. It talks through making induction positive because so often people feel like induction has made certain things happen in their labor. So yeah. for example, something like being in the hospital from the very beginning instead of being in your own environment. We will talk you through how you can make that not matter as much because yeah. you're putting things in place and you're still having your space be your space and have it be that your body feels safe to get on with birth and your baby there. Um, it's almost more important, isn't it, when you're having an induction to really know what your options are, how to make decisions and how you want it to go and having a birth plan that will yeah. do that. And birth plans are something that we very much go in on and talk about how to make one, what to include, like they're really important. Um, and with regards to the cesarean part, cesarean as well, you may not realise, but if you opt for a cesarean, if you end up with a ces having a cesarean, you've still got options and choices. It's not just cesareans happen this way and that's it. There's lots of things that you can put in place to still make you feel really positive about that cesarean make it feel like it's your cesarean and that's what matters that you're not on a conveyor belt and just going through and being like thrown out you know that's done next person it's still personal to you and the birth of your baby um, and that's something that we are very passionate about is that hypnobirthing is not just for vaginal births hypnobirthing is for all types of birth and all types of people and everyone deserves to come out of birth thinking hey, i'm a badass bitch and i smashed that yeah so we do definitely in-depth cover induction and cesarean. Mm. So please don't think that hypnobirthing in our course isn't for you if you know you're going to be birthing in that way because we have got you covered. Yeah, we have. There's also the fact that most of the things that we do when or we learn about when preparing for a vaginal birth, we absolutely still need those things when we're preparing mm -hmm. a cesarean. Things like the birth planning, the breathing techniques, the birth partner's role, um, decision-making, all of that is very very fucking useful yeah. when you're preparing for cesarean so yeah absolutely we've got you covered no matter how you're birthing your baby absolutely another question we get asked all the time is when is it best to start a hypnobirthing course no yeah basically as soon as possible um some people like to wait until their 20 week scan which i totally get but if you are particularly nervous if you're the sort of person that's really worried i'd say get on it asap and let's start working on getting rid of that fear so that we can avoid that fight or flight we have so many people that come to us and say i didn't i i, I spent ages not getting pregnant because i did not want to i never wanted a baby because i was so scared of it and then they get pregnant and they panic they do this course and then they're excited to give birth so it's really really possible but the early the earlier you do it, I'd say if you feel like that, the better. You need to spend some time kind of getting on with it. However, on the flip side of that, if you're 39 weeks pregnant right now and you're thinking, I haven't got time to do this, you yeah. have. How much of, did you binge watch when, you know, you're sat there and you've got nothing to do? You spend an entire day watching, I don't know, 12 episodes that are all an hour long. You could yeah. easily get through the whole of the digital pack in that time. Like, I've got faith in you that you could do that. And actually your future self will thank you immensely. Absolutely. Um, it will really help you to take away any fear no matter how close your birth is it's really quick to do we do have a lot of work to do mm -hmm. when it comes to eliminating that fear because it's been a lifetime of perhaps fearing birth yeah. but you'd be amazed at how quickly you can take some of that away when you just get started on it absolutely um another one that we get asked all the time is i've already had a baby do i need it Yes. So many people come to us having already had a baby. In fact, I, you know, both Alex and I, we did hypnobirthing the second time round. Yeah. Someone um, did our digital pack who was birthing her fifth baby. <laughs> and she said she'd had pretty positive births yeah. um, with some of the previous ones, not all of them. Um, and she said she couldn't believe how much stuff she hadn't known. She said it was embarrassing, didn't yeah. she? <laughs> and actually, she loved hypnobirthing so much that she went on to train um, as an instructor with us. So it just goes to show that it's really never too late. It doesn't matter how many babies you've had. There are always kind of things that you can put in place that will help you to feel calmer, mm -hmm. things that make it more positive. And every birth is different as well. So 
there's really no point going into it and thinking that it's going to be like the last one. Um, if you are a second time parent who perhaps had a traumatic experience first time round, we have got you. We, yeah, we can help you with all the different things that you can put in place this time to make that an entirely different thing. 100%. Another thing that we get asked so often is how do midwives feel about hypnobirthing? And this is often a hard one to answer because people are people and people will feel differently. But on the whole, for what we found is they love it. You make their jobs easier. Yeah. You make their environment that they work in nicer. Nice. Yeah. If you are kind of taking the time to make your environment nice and cozy and feeling safe for your body, that means that they get to work in that environment as well. Um, you save them time if they are not having to explain from like really on a basic level everything that they're offering. If you already kind of have some knowledge of what it is that you are going to choose then that means that they don't have to spend what limited time that they have explaining that stuff to you and at the moment the nhs is so stretched yeah. and it means that our um our healthcare providers don't have the time that they wish they could spend with you so if you go in there and you've taken it into your own hands and you have taken the time to understand what's on offer then that's going to really help them and most of all it's going to help you yeah. because you're already feeling confident and you don't feel like oh i've got so many questions that this yeah. person can't answer for me and the thing is courses like ours shouldn't have to exist it should just be something that you get in the nhs from your midwife they sit there and they talk it through with you but it's just not the case so if you're wanting a positive birth you do have to take things into your own hands this is the reason why we have kept it as cheap as we possibly can because we would love for people just to be able to do this. Everybody gets this when they get pregnant. However, it's just not the way things work. So this is the reason that, you know, we do have a mega discount code for you to enable you to have that. Everybody deserves this no matter what their financial situation is, no matter whether they work shifts and they can't attend other antenatal classes. This is so worth it. And it's the thing that time and time again, people come back and say, it is the best money I spent. Um, and another thing that I think is people tend to ask is does hypnobirthing cover the postnatal period now usually not usually not but with us and with tbu yeah. and our instructors it does um because it's really important what's really quite terrifying is when you've had a baby and then you get sent off into the world and you don't know what the fuck is about to happen you don't know what your baby is doing is normal you don't know what to expect that can all be really worrying for you so when you buy our digital pack we've got a postnatal pack as well that we throw in for free because it is important to us that you are preparing just as much for your postnatal period as you do for your birth um, i had terrible postnatal depression first time around and i think it's because i just didn't know what was going on i wasn't prepared for it and i don't wish that on anyone i wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy um so this is included within the price, including in the price when you have the discount as well, because we want you to feel prepared. Yeah, we want you to know what to expect with your baby and have that toolkit for the postnatal side of things as well. It really is important when it comes to feeding your baby, planning for that time and just knowing what's normal. Um, the postnatal pack even includes a baby massage course for you to be able to connect with your baby and help them through any kind of difficult things that they've got going on as well and there's lots in feeding about there there's a full breastfeeding course there's um videos about bottle feeding formula feeding you know we have got your back <laughs> we basically this whole digital pack is what alex and i wish we'd have had first time round, and that if we look back on we wish somebody would have turned up in our inbox and been like hey <laughs> have this please and it would have made such a difference so we are trying to you know vicariously live through you lot in making sure that your births are positive where our first ones absolutely were not yeah, we're here changing the world one prego at a time <laughs> um so if you want to get started on our digital pack you can do that in the next 24 hours for just 29 pounds you can use the code tbu massive which will get you that massive discount and that is just for the next 24 hours so get to that quick mm -hmm. if you would like to purchase the course later on down the line, beyond the next 24 hours, then you can use the code TBU Taster. That will get you 10 pounds off, making it 35 pounds, which is still, still a really good bargain, <laughs> let's be honest. 
Um, but yeah, and that code is ongoing. So you can use that at any point. You can, if you're waiting to have a scan or you're waiting to pay day, mm -hmm. then you can absolutely use that one then. Um, and another little thing we wanted to send you as well. If you order the pack in the next 24 hours, um, we will also throw in a free pack of affirmation cards, which will come directly to you in the post. Um, you may have heard a little bit about affirmations. If you don't know much about them, if you look through our YouTube videos, there is a video on affirmations um so have a look at that because they're a really powerful hypnobirthing tool so we'll send you a free pack of it if you use um the code to get it in the next 24 hours yeah um and yeah so come and watch the rest of our youtube videos yeah. come and subscribe to our youtube channel and come and follow us on instagram for more birthy goodness we try and put out informative posts posts that get you all pumped and ready and feeling good. And we will share birth stories and other people's thoughts on there as well. Um, and as I said, regular Q and A's that mm. you can contribute your question to. Um, also, if you buy the pack, you get to be a part of our Facebook community. Which, which we're is, in. Yay, <laughs> which is just for those that have bought the packs. So you can come there to get kind of more tailored advice for yourself on your circumstances. And everyone in there is just wonderful. Great. Yeah, they will answer everyone else's queries, put your mind to rest mm. about your situation if they've been in the same boat. Um, so come and buy the pack and join that community and yeah, get yeah. all that help. We aren't the sort to be like, buy, buy the pack, bye. We will carry on being there for you in that community so that you can answer, we can answer any questions that you might possibly have. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed that. Come and follow us, like Alex said, at The Birth Uprising on Instagram so that we can, you know, answer any questions. We'll put a question box up so you can have any questions you may have about the taster there. And yeah, have amazing births. You are incredible. You have the ability to do this. No matter what your birth entails, you are an amazing human being who totally has it within them and has the capability to birth in their own way and their own right. Yeah. You've got this. We believe in you. Bye. Bye.